All right then gang, so I'd like to show you in this video how when we click on the more info button, we're gonna to go to a details page for that pizza. And then on that page, on the details page, we'll show the title, the ingredients, but also more information like who created it and when they created it. And at some point, we're also gonna add a delete button on that page to delete that pizza. So the first thing we need to do is make this page, this details page, and link up these buttons to that page. So let us now go to Tuts and create a new file and call this details.php, okay? Now the first thing I'm gonna do is make some PHP tags at the top and then down below, I'm gonna do an HTML tag and I'm gonna get rid of most of this because we're gonna include our different templates right here. So instead of me writing these out because I'm super lazy, I'm gonna copy this and paste it in right here. And then I'm also gonna copy the other one, which is down here and paste it in at the bottom. Okay then, so we have our header and our footer on this page. Let's just for now do a very simple H2 and we'll say details. We'll change this later on, but you know, just so we know what page it is. Okay then, so inside index, this is where we list out the different pizzas. So we need to link up these things to that page. So what I'm gonna do is change this href right here. Now what we want to do is go to the details.php page but dependent on the pizza, we want to send along some more information because we want to send along the information that is gonna allow us to get that individual pizza. So what I'm gonna do is use a query string to do this. So to do that, we say question mark, then the property name, that's gonna be the ID of this individual pizza. Then I want to echo out the ID of this individual pizza. Now remember, when we got the pizzas, we specified we wanted the ID as well. So down here, we can say, inside PHP tags, like so, and let's close that off as well, that we want to echo the ID. So we have access to the individual pizza because we're going through a loop here, remember, for each, pizzas as pizza. So we have access to the individual pizza each time around. We want the ID property from each pizza. And that is gonna go inside the URL. So we have details.php question mark, ID equals whatever the ID of this pizza is, okay? So then let's save that now and just see if this URL works. I'm gonna refresh and if we go to this one, now you can see we get ID equals one. If we go to a different one, we get ID equals two and so forth, okay? So then how do we get that information on this details page to go and get that pizza with that ID and show it here? Well, this up here looks an awful lot like when we used get requests. When we used a get request, remember I said the data is sent inside the URL. And that's all essentially we're doing here. Whenever we go to a website up here, we're using a get request to get that website. And this is a get request to get this page. And then we're getting this data on the get request. So what we can do is use that get array that we've used in the past to get this information. So what we'll do is go back to the details page, first of all, and inside the PHP over here, what we'll do is check to see if we have this get data. So I'm gonna do a little comment to say check get request ID parameter. So we'll do an if statement, and inside this if we wanna say is set, remember this is how we check if the variable is actually set, and we're gonna check dollar sign underscore get, and we want the ID parameter, which is that thing inside the URL. So we're checking if that is set. If that is present inside the URL, then this is gonna pass, okay? And we have access to it here. Now, what we're also gonna be doing in this file is interacting with the database. So we need to include that DB connect file. So I'm gonna say include, and then we wanna go into the config file forward slash DB underscore connect dot php all right so then now we have this id remember before we make any query with any user entered information and at the end of the day this is user entered even though we're doing it automatically here a user could write their own id up here if they wanted to so when we're doing that and making a query with that data remember we use that function to escape any kind of sql characters 
So we're going to say variable ID is equal to my SQL I underscore real escape string. Okay, and we pass in the connection and then we pass in also get and then the ID. Okay, so we're escaping any sensitive SQL characters right here and that is going to protect our database. So now we have that ID, what we want to do is make the SQL that we're going to use to make a query. So another variable SQL equals and we're this time selecting data much like we did in the index over here. We selected data. This time we're just selecting one individual record instead of all of it. So what I'm going to say is select. We want all of the fields. So that means we want the title, the email, the ingredients, the created art and the ID. We want everything. We want it from the pizzas table. And this time we want to add on a clause to say we only want a single one. Now to do that we use where and then the ID is equal to the ID that we've just got from the user, this thing. So it's going to select any record where the ID field is equal to that. So the ID up here, okay? And that's what that is going to get us. So that's the SQL created. Now we need to get the query result. And remember to do that, we say result is equal to my SQL I underscore query. We pass in the connection first of all, and then we also pass in the SQL. And then under that, we need to fetch the result in array format. So it's just going to be one individual pizza that we're fetching, and we want it in an associative array. Now, remember before we used this thing, my SQL I fetch all. That's because we wanted all of the rows, right? Now, this time we're just getting one row. So we can use a different method. And I'm going to store this in a variable, first of all, called pizza. And I'll set it equal to my SQL I underscore fetch underscore associ. So that fetches this one result as an associative array. So we'll be like name equals Mario Supreme. Um, email equals mario at the netninja.co.uk and so forth. Okay, so this is used when we just want to get that one result as an associative array. This over here was when we're fetching all of the results, all of the rows. All right. So anyway, inside this function, we pass in the result that we actually got from this query. So that gets us now the array and that's stored in a variable called pizza. Now, remember, I said at the end, it's always a good idea to free the results so we're freeing up memory and also close the connection. So we're going to say my SQL I underscore free underscore result and pass in the result that we got. And then finally close the connection, my SQL I underscore close and pass in the connection. OK, so the more you do this, the easier it becomes because it's the same kind of steps every time around. We have the data, we make the query, uh, we get the results and we fetch those in array format. Then we close off the stuff at the end. So anyway, that's all the PHP right there. What I'm actually going to do is just print to the screen so we can see it, the pizza. So print R and then pizza. All right, so let's preview this and refresh. And now we can see this pizza at the top. Awesome. If we change this ID to one, then we should see a different one, Ninja Supreme. Okay. Now, if we change this to something we don't have, then we don't see anything on the screen. OK, cool. But anyway, we want to output all of this stuff right here to the browser now. Now, to do that, I'm going to come down here. And the first thing I'd like to do is create a container. So let me delete this. And I'll say div.container. Remember, that is a materialized class. And I'm also going to give this a class of center that is going to centralize all the text on this page. OK, then. So we only want to output the pizza details or try to output them if we have a pizza, because remember, I said if we put in an ID up here of like seven, which we don't have, then we can't output all that HTML for that pizza. So we want to check if the pizza exists, first of all. So PHP tags, and we're going to say if pizza. So if there is one, this is going to pass. If there's not, then it's not going to pass. We're going to use this alternative syntax, so colon, and create your end tags, PHP and end if. In fact, no, we'll do an else statement and output something else if they don't have a pizza. 
So we'll close that as well down here. So PHP and then finally end if like so. Now, if we do have a pizza, this is where we want to output the template. So we'll do an H4 first of all, and we're gonna output the title. So PHP and we'll echo the pizza title. Now I'm gonna use HTML special chars to do this. And then we're gonna output the pizza title. Then we can spell it like so. Okay, so that's the title of the pizza. Next, we want who it's created by. So I'll do a P tag, PHP tags again. And then we'll say, in fact, before that, we'll say created by, and then a colon, and then output who it's created by here. So HTML special chars again. And then we want to output the pizza. And this time, the email from the pizza. All right, all making sense so far. And then third, we'll do another P tag. Inside here, we wanna output the date. So I'm gonna say PHP to output the tags, then echo, and we forgot to echo here as well. So let me just type that in. And this time, we want the date, and it's gonna be the pizza, and created at. So this is gonna convert this into some kind of readable date for us and output that. Okay, so down here, we want to finally output the ingredients. So a little title, first of all, ingredients. And then I'm not gonna cycle through these using a for each. I'm just gonna output them in a P tag for now, but PHP again, and we'll echo HTML special chars. And then we want the pizza and the ingredients. Whew, okay then. So let's save that and see if it works. So I'm gonna refresh. And now we can see all of this stuff over here, okay undefined variable on line 38. So line 38, okay, this should be double Z. Save that and refresh again. Okay, cool, so now we have the name of the pizza, it was created by, the date it was created, the ingredients right here as well, cool. So let's get rid of this stuff at the top. We don't need that anymore. And also, I'd want to output some kind of error on the page if it doesn't exist. For example, if we go to ID equals six, then nothing is there. I'd like to say something like there's no such pizza. So we'll do that inside the else down here. We'll say H5 and then no such pizza exists. All right then. So I think that is about it. Let's save that and refresh. And we see no such pizza exists if this is not valid. So let's try these. So we see the Ninja Supreme, awesome. We see the Mario Supreme, and we also see Yoshi Supreme, but anything else above that, and we get some kind of error. Cool. So that, my friends, is how we select a single thing from the database, from the table, and show that in the browser.